Okay, guys, we're back here with part two of the Longworth Chuck. Uh, what we did in part one, if you've not seen that, make sure that you click in the link because it is uh, pretty much tells you what we're doing. So uh, just for a quick reference, we have the six slots, eight if you want, ten, whatever you use. Just make sure you divide it equally. We have the inner ring here is the faceplate reference that is only there because that is the size of our faceplate to attach it to the chuck this is the outer perimeter this is our safe travel distance we cannot exceed that because of the lathe that we're using okay you're going to have plate one and plate two are cut identical for the exception of a couple changes that's what we're going to do now you would simply cut plate one cut the same thing with the additions for the back plate and then simply flip it over to install it. There's a lot of tutorials on how to put them together, so I'm not going to be covering that in this video. We want to tie the two plates together, so we need a tie-in. And this, for most people, is nothing more than a 5 16-inch bolt dead center. So if I drop in a circle dead center for the bolt, that means that the two plates can be put together while at the same time keeping true center. Very important. All right, depending on the faceplate that you use, our particular faceplate has four holes in it for attaching to whatever substrate or uh, piece that we're working with. Uh, some have eight, some have six slots. I mean, there's just so many depending on what you're using. And if you're using a just a, a claw, then you may choose to cut out a, a three inch center piece on a separate piece you can easily do that and put it straight to your back plate and then clamp down on that with your jaws now if you do so then you're gonna have to account for the distance here in between your opening of your slot and the the chuck so uh, whatever case you may be my particular face plate that we're using uses quarter inch holes in just the four corners so I need this to be exactly a half inch in from center so I'm just a little bit off there I'm going to do a quick adjustment remeasure and guys there are so many techniques for doing that I assume that if you need help please let us know in the comments but I won't get into that right now that needs to be a quarter inch hole so I make sure that's exactly a quarter inch and it's a half inch from the outer ring I have four of those in all four corners, so I can copy-paste, go through alignment, but um, as you know from part one, I am a fan of Polar Array. Anything to make your life easier, folks, do it. Uh, we have enough challenges <laughs> with this as it is. So I need three more copies. These are going to be spaced 90 degrees apart. Uh, again, if you didn't hear that in part one, that is anytime you need to determine the true angles, it's your how many reference points you have divided into 360 degrees so this popped my holes 90 degrees apart from each other this is my faceplate so this is where my faceplate is going to be attached on plate one you don't cut these holes on plate two you cut the holes it's that simple and the next thing we're going to do is this is completely optional but uh, most people find it handy the especially the larger of the chuck you make I'm going to drop finger holes toward the outside now, these don't have to be a hundred percent precise if your fingers are large go three quarters of an inch to an inch uh, depending on the size of the chuck most average fingers are a little over a half inch that way you can uh, just stick the tip of your finger in you're not going to be running your finger all the way through it so i'm going to make that about um, 0.65 of an inch all right we need this spread multiple places around so i'm going to do a, another polar array I'm going to drop them every 6 or every 60 degrees like we did before. Uh, this assures me that depending on the way the chuck is positioned on the lathe, I could quickly grab a reference point. Again, those are 60 degrees apart from each other. So this is what we're ended up with. On, on your finger hose, if you decide to go with this, uh, you may want to, for plate one, whether it's the front or the back, it doesn't matter at this point, have it in one position. 
<clears throat> on the other plate, I choose to offset mine, and the reason I do that is because when this thing is moving at all, if you your two holes from the front and the back plate are lined up identical, you're going to get your fingers pinched, and especially if you're using aluminum. Uh, aluminum becomes a, a big big razor blade if you're not careful, so make sure you sand down all the parts uh, regardless of whether you're using MDF, plywood, acrylic, aluminum, it doesn't matter. Another quick polar array, and now I have my finger holes for the front plate. So, what we have is a plate. It has six grooves in it. This will allow the jaws of the chuck to slide from the outer to the inner. As we showed in part one, this is going to be a opposite from the other plate. Alright, so as far as creating your tool pass go, we know that we want the center post on both of them. That has to happen. We know that we want the grooves on both plates. We know we want the outer perimeter on both plates. And we only want one set of the holes for each plate. So at this point, we're going to copy this over. We're going to move one of them out of the way for a second. Now you could do this however you want. If you're real good at keeping on task, uh, then you don't have to do this. But folks, I'm not that fortunate. I have to think about what I'm doing quite often. On one plate, we don't need these. This is only there for our face plate attachment. So I'm going to get rid of those. And we'll call this one the front plate and this one the back plate. This circle was only there as a reference point to show me the diameter of the face plate, so I'm going to get rid of it as well. Likewise, the points that I dropped in, reference only. So I have a set of finger holes for both plates. This one, I don't need this. I'm going to go with the front plate as being the finger holes on the outer perimeter. And that actually is kind of helpful if you choose to do so. This is the front plate. It is done. We can cut that. As with always, make sure you start from the inner workout. Uh, don't do as most new folks do. They think they've got to cut the outside first and work themselves in. And folks, unless you've got that securely mounted to the table, you're going to have problems. So make sure that you work from the inside out. Okay, on this side over here, the back plate, I'm going to eliminate the outer finger holes because that's what we used on the face plate or on the front plate. So once I get rid of those, you see that my finger hose for the back is slightly in from the front plate. We still don't need the face plate reference, so I'm going to get rid of that. However, I am going to leave the face plate mounts because this is where it's going to mount to your face plate. So just, I said I wasn't going to get into real quick how you put this thing together other than uh, give special thought to how you're going to tie it into the, the face plate. Uh, for most people, this is simply, you're going to have a 5 16 inch bolt connecting the two plates together dead center. Then you want your face plate. Now, depending on if you've got a dedicated face plate for this, mount it to it once and be done with it. But most people don't have multiple face plates, and they use the same one for many things. So it's helpful that these here are threaded, tapped and threaded. That way you can simply bolt onto it. Uh, if you went with the... Um, outer outer ring and you cut this out of let's say MDF you can attach this to the acrylic or aluminum or wood whatever you made and then simply put that in the jaws of your clamp so whatever case works best for you but guys we're we're almost done here again you've got the front plate all six grooves all six grooves on the back plate finger holes on both with um, uh, a little bit offset. On the back plate, you've got the uh, hose to mount to your face plate. And just to do a quick check, if I rotate this over, I am going to put those together real quick so it's one piece. And if I flip it over, That's what we end up with. 